Welcome to a detailed look at Roll Camera, the cooperative movie making board game. Thanks to Grand Gamers Guild for sending us a review copy of this game. Roll Camera, the filmmaking board game, was designed by Malaki Ray Rempin, and I apologize, that's probably Malachi, but I'm not certain. <laughs> probably Malachi. Malachi Ray Rampin, who also did the art and graphic design. Great job there, Malachi. Features a film reel shaped insert that was designed by Bryce Cook. And thank you, Board Game Geek, for now listing things like who designed the inserts. Roll Camera was originally funded on Kickstarter and published in 2021 by a collaboration between Keen Bean Studios and Grand Gamers Build, at least here in North America. There are additional publishers for other parts of the world. Now, a second printing of the game is currently being filmed. Filmed? That's, we're talking about roll camera. That, that's a Freudian slip that just fits, isn't it? Is currently being funded on Kickstarter along with a new B-movie expansion. No, we will not be talking about the expansion at all tonight. But there is no better time than right now, really, to hop on Kickstarter and check out this game when you can get all of the content in one mm -hmm. place. Yeah, and if I remember, it's cheaper than retail, too. It looks like a good deal. With Oh, they've added so much new stuff. But anyway. Role player plays one to six players. Note, despite what it says on Board Game Geek and the box. So I, this is something I'm hoping they're fixing with the center, second printing. The box and Board Game Geek both say it's a one to four player game, but then the rule book clearly has rules for playing with five and six. A game of roll camera tends to take about 45 minutes to about an hour and a half, depending on the player count. And of course, your experience and whether you're teaching the game or not. Now, Roll Camera is a cooperative board game where you take on the role of a production company brought in to save a failing movie. If you aren't able to complete this film on time, on budget, and at an acceptable quality level, you'll never work in the film industry again. The movie magic comes to life through a dice-driven worker placement game where you spend dice to build sets, hold production meetings, deal with and resolve an end-ending stream of problems, place actors and equipment on set, and film scenes, while trying the best you can to stick to the script. All too much like real-life productions where only careful planning and cooperation will get your movie across the finish line in a state anyone will want to see it in. Now, the original standard box printing of Roll Camera has an MSRP of $44 USD, whereas the new printing is currently on Kickstarter has a $50 US pledge level. Now, this new second printing does feature the upgrades that were originally part of the Kickstarter edition of the original, including the UV coating, and they're very happy, they're proud of Clapper Box. Now, to see this Clapper Box and what you get inside it, be sure to check out our Roll Camera unboxing video on YouTube. Now, the production quality of this game is top notch. It features the highest quality set of rules I've ever touched. Like, I thought the ones in Tapestry were impressive. This actually blows them away. Sorry, Jamie. Board is thick and two-sided, though honestly, you only use one side to play. The other side is like a tool for storyboarding and telling your own stories. Uh, the dice are actually etched, so you don't have to worry about them wearing off. They actually feature symbols in two different colors. Cards are well finished and feature clear designed iconography and very readable text. I honestly can't think of a single thing to complain about here. I wish more games were at this quality level. It's really nice to see a game publisher use Kickstarter to improve the game for everyone forever, not mm -hmm. just the backers once. Yes, I do love that. Stretch goals that improve the game for everyone. Great job there, Keen Bean. Now, setup for roll camera is pretty quick. You select or randomly assign one of the six roles. You take the matching player board and summary card for that. Boards put it in the middle. You shuffle the tiles. The tiles are split in two and placed face up. These are your set tiles, four by four grids showing sets. Idea cards are shuffled and dealt to the players, three each or two each with four or six, or sorry, five or six players. The rest are placed next to the board. Problem cards are shuffled, put next to the board. Scene cards are shuffled and placed face up on the board with two scenes drawn. So you always have three face up scenes in the storyboard area. Five script cards from each deck, these are split into two decks, top and bottom halves of your, of your script, are shuffled and placed face up on the board so you can only see the top one. And the quality token is placed on the start spot. Finally, you take money and time based on this little tracker with wheels on it. 
You actually flip it over and set the dials according to the number of players you have and the difficulty setting you want to play. Now, optionally, you can draw or select a production company card to use for this game. These add an extra level of difficulty to the game and include requirements like spending extra money to film, having a tighter time schedule, or having to finish at a certain quality level. Production companies are bad, but in a good way. They mm. up the difficulty of the game and are a great fine-tuning mechanism, either randomly or to work on something specific. Mm -hmm. and combined with the customization and time and money available, you can really fine-tune this game for something more or less intense. Now, each turn in roll camera starts with drawing a new problem. You read it out, you place it above the board. Then, act out on all the existing problems that are left over from previous rounds. Obviously, none the first round. Now, one slight benefit is if there's already three problems up, you don't have to draw a new one. You have plenty of deal to deal with at this time. You don't have to deal with a new one. Then you're going to roll all of the existing dice. Um... Sorry, I missed a step there. Sorry. <laughs> These problems involve all kinds of things that make your life more difficult, including needing extra dice to film, not being able to use certain action spots, needing more money to do certain actions, and a ton more. This is a pretty thick deck. And then we get to the meat of the game, dice placement. Right. Now here, after resolving the current problems, you roll all the dice you get to roll everything in the game except ones that are currently on set because you don't want to mess up with your, your, your already set up scenes. Note, before rolling, you can remove stuff from the set if you need to, but in most cases, they're going to be stuck there until you film the scene. You then place these dice onto various action spots on the main board or your player board. These actions include resolving those problems I mentioned earlier. The first problem to resolve is nice and simple. Two dice, the next requires a pair, the next requires three of a kind. When you resolve problems, you flip them over and you get rewarded for solving problems in sets of five. For every five problems you solve, you either get $2, well, two of the money, two money, and, or add one week to your schedule. Trust me, you're going to need both. You can then add a set piece to the set or rearrange it. Again, there's a, a deck of these tiles that are four by four. You're going to choose one of the two top things and add it to your set. The set is a five by five grid. And you're going to try to set it up, hopefully in a way that you can later film one of the freeze face up scenes that are on the storyboard. And just to clarify, it's a five by five grid and the set, the set pieces are two by two, four yes. squares total, not four by four. You, <laughs> Thank you. Yes, two by two, four squares total. You're right. Um, so you're going to put this on and you're going to try to do it the, so that you're, you're matching the, the scenes on the storyboard. Hopefully more than one of them so you don't have to rearrange anything. Now, buying new scenes does always cost, whereas rearranging does not. Rearranging lets you move around everything is already on the board as long as you haven't assigned dice to them yet. Once you've got an actor on a set, they won't deal with you moving the stuff around. Them. Next, you can hold a meeting. This is, in, in my opinion, the best part of the game, the most fun part of the game, the most thematic, and the most cooperative part. Three players are selected to present one of their idea cards. One of these ideas will happen right then. Another gets placed on the to-do list, which is a spot on the board where it's saved for later, and a third is trashed. The idea deck is significant, and there are tons of things and ways to break the rules of the games, like gaining money or time or quality or taking actions at a reduced cost, resolving problems, using other players' special abilities, and so on. After having a meeting, everyone who submitted an idea gets to replenish their hand. A neat rule is when you're playing with more than three players, the person calling the meeting doesn't actually have to submit an idea themselves. Next up, there's a spot to hire interns. This is done to turn another die to any side of your choice, which can be useful for trying to get the right stuff on set or for using your special abilities. But hiring interns comes with problems. So as soon as you hire an intern, you must draw a new problem and act upon it. Now, filming a scene involves having dice on the set in a pattern that matches one of the face-up scene cards. Filming seeds cost money and can also have an impact on your quality and your schedule. Film scenes are then placed on the editing room track and a new scene is revealed on the storyboard, showing new ones. Another option is to complete the ideas on the to-do list. Remember earlier I said every time you hold a meeting, one of the, ide the ideas gets on the to-do list. The board has two spots for these that are saved that you can then and act on by either spending two dice or spending one die and paying a cost. Now, all of these actions are on the main board. In addition to this, every player role, and there are six of them, have three different actions on them that can, they can also use their dice on. 
Now, everyone has an action that lets him discard and draw new idea cards, but all the other actions are unique to the different roles. These include things like the star being able to change the script, the cinematographer able to use gaff tape to fix problems, or the director being able to reframe the scene and change the storyboards around, and more. Now, while it seems like there are a lot of options here, it's not actually that overwhelming, as each time you get the dice, you probably won't be getting all six dice, and once mm -hmm. you've rolled, you'll be even further limited by what is face up on the dives themselves. Yes. Now, at the each end of each player turn, your schedule gets reduced by one, and if time runs out, the entire team loses. Note, you can also lose instantly by running out of money. The inevitable tripod of production, time, quality, and money, pick any two. <laughs> now, if you don't run out of time or money, the game ends when your team films their fifth and final scene. You then look at the script that's up and compare that to the scene cards that are up and it has to do with a color thing. And you're looking at the color and the order of the scenes and you'll get some quality bonuses for fitting the script or lose quality for not fitting the script. The group as a whole wins if your overall film quality isn't in the red. Now on the board, there are a total of five good quality winning ranks, but amusingly you can also win if your quality drops to the absolute bottom of the quality track as you've made a movie that's so bad, it's good. Don't underestimate the power of a cult classic. You don't get the birds or killer tomatoes by making high quality cinema. Now, along with these pretty dry and simple mechanics, the game also encourages some role play while you're filming your movie. Every role has a player privilege on it that you can use during the game. These include things like the star being able to call for silence and the cinematographer being able to direct anyone who's taking pictures or videos while playing. Now, along with this, when you finish the game, the group is encouraged to tell the story of their movie using prompts on the board and the scenes that were used to finish the game. Finally, there is actually a whole other improv way to play the game by flipping the board over where you can play through an improv storytelling experience where you use the 20 scenes and place them through a five act structure and can tell a whole movie. Now, one final note. The game rules don't really change with player count. This is, is one of the only games I've ever seen where playing solo, the full rules apply. The only thing to watch for is some of the idea cards require multiple players. Those have a special symbol on them to identify these. And if you draw those while playing solo, you just discard them. That's it. Otherwise, you play it just like any other player count. Now, the other minor change I mentioned already is when you're playing five or six players, you only get two ideas and not three. All right, well, now that we know how to play, let's move on to our thoughts about this cooperative dice placement game. So the first thing that caught my attention about World Camera is the theme. I'm always looking for tabletop games that feature new or unique themes or less used themes. And honestly, this is the first non-role-playing game, tabletop game that I played about movie making. Yes, I know there are others out there. Uh, the very popular Dream Factory and uh, the old cheap-ass game, Deadwood Studios USA. But this was the first movie making game for me. And while there are others, this is not what I would consider a common theme. Yeah, so indeed, I was interested as one of my favorite games from growing up was a roll and move about making Oscar worthy films by combining actors and plots uh, known as international movie maker. I like think we've talked about in the past. Yeah, we have. Now, the next thing that struck me about this was the component quality, uh, which I didn't know until I did our unboxing video. I admit, I didn't do a lot of research before this game showed up. And when I opened it up, I was surprised by just how well designed everything was. And then I was even more shocked with what Sean's already mentioned a couple times now is how little of what I got in this box that were Kickstarter exclusives. At first, I just assumed things like the real shape uh, plastic component or organizer from Game Trays with some kind of bonus, only to learn that's in every copy of the game. And that's pretty awesome. Now, with the new printing being kickstarted right now, even the stuff that was exclusive to my edition is in all future copies. They've decided this is the base level of this game at this point, which I think is awesome. And I would love to see more companies doing that. That just We put out a basic and deluxe edition. It's popular enough. We, we sold out our first print run. We're just going to go with the deluxe. Yeah, indeed. While I completely understand the idea that you're somehow losing out by not getting anything unique when you back on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. it's just not true. <laughs> this is a game that's more true to the intent of Kickstarter than many in this way. Yeah. Now, as for the mechanics and gameplay, they're just 
solid. Uh, I would go so far as to use the term elegant. Um, what I like most is the actions you take just make sense when compared to the theme, right? Like you're putting people on set, you're rearranging the set, you're ho having meetings. Now there is still some abstractness, uh, like needing sets of the same dice to fix problems. Everything though just makes sense and it works. This is helped by the very simple but effective iconography used throughout the game. Like the symbol for dice is it's very clear, the symbol for set, and even the problem cards have a symbol on the back and kind of give you a heads up what might get affected the next turn. Indeed, everything is quite obvious and familiar. And while there is some reason required, and certainly if you want to have fun with more it more than just just mechanically, uh sorry, there is some reading required. And certainly if you want to have fun with it, more than just mechanically. The icons really minimize it and make it easy to understand even for younger players or those less comfortable in English. Yeah, the hardest one would be the idea cards. You're probably just gonna miss out on the flavor text though. The iconography is pretty clear on them. Now, one great touch in this game that I haven't mentioned earlier as part of the rule review, and maybe I should have, but it wasn't part of how to play, is the humor that is included in this game. Along with mechanical things, uh, sorry, along with the game mechanics, things like the problem and idea cards have hilarious flavor text on them. That really makes the game come alive, especially when you combine it with those player privilege abilities and people getting into characters. Now that said, I realize that this aspect of the game isn't going to be for everyone, especially those player privilege rules where people can just call for silence in the middle of the table or start rearranging the area around the game board. Thankfully, those rules are optional and can be used by groups that like it and can be tossed aside for those that don't. And even if one player in the group is looking for more fun, they don't actively get in the way of others trying for a more serious game. And also, I was thinking about this earlier, if you can actually play this game with anyone who's worked in film production, they will enjoy the flavor text <laughs> with a whole other level of, on top of just the pure amusement anyone else would get from it. There you go. So one of the best parts about Roll Camera is the game balance. This is a cooperative game that feels tense at almost every moment. Maybe not your first turn, but by your second. You constantly have problems to deal with. You never have enough dice, and there's no way you're going to be able to complete your film without running out of time or money without clever use of the idea cards. Even in games where you win, it still feels like you could have lost at almost any moment. And that win always feels rewarding. With this, I do appreciate the various difficulty levels. So you can adjust your starting time and money based on the experience of the players. And then you can tweak that even further with the production company cards. So you can make the game even more difficult or even have a level that's kind of between easy and medium by playing easy with a production company. Yeah, and I haven't played with all the rules yet, but if there was any imbalance, I think at the lower player counts, making sure you have the right player roles could be that one tiny aspect that isn't in perfect balance, which of course is an issue with most asymmetrical games. But even with that, I know there are two ideas in the deck that let you swap out what roles are in play. So they've even taken account for that. Yeah. Now, even with all this great stuff going on in roll camera, there is one potentially serious problem that really does need to be brought up, and that is quarterbacking. This is a game where players need to work together to get their film created, and that is going to involve players suggesting to other players what they do on their turns. This includes simple things like, call a meeting, I've got a great idea, to having players get their hands in there and start moving around the set tiles on another player's turn just because they're trying to find the optimum position for all the current scenes that are up. With the level of cooperation required in roll camera, I think some quarterbacking is honestly inevitable. And that is going to turn some people off this game right from the start and make it a no starter. Now, this potential issue actually gets worse if you have experienced players playing with new players. Yeah, it might even be required for some tables to sort of enforce some level of quiet time so that the player whose turn it is has a chance to evaluate things for themselves before getting overwhelmed by suggestions. Mm -hmm. I would recommend this in particular for games with younger players. Yeah, if you've got a shy player, make sure they're still taking part. That, that is, was definitely an issue playing with my, my youngest daughter would speak quietly and just not even get heard. Make sure everyone is getting time at the table. Overall, Roll Camera is a very well-produced and well-designed cooperative board game 
with a theme you just don't see often. It's very well balanced, providing tension from start to finish and offering variable difficulty systems to keep the game interesting as your group learns to play. The mechanics are easy to learn and well tied to the theme. Except for a potential quarterbacking problem, I have nothing else negative to say about this game. If you love working with other players to solve problems and competing against the game, trying to work together to win, you really need to check out Roll Camera. It is one of the most tense and rewarding cooperative games I've played. Due to the variable difficulty levels, it can be great for gamers of all experience levels and can even be enjoyed by younger kids. Things like the humor and role-playing aspects to me are just an added bonus. And if you don't like these aspects, are easy to ignore. Now, I personally haven't play, had a chance to play this as much as I'd like, but it was so easy to pick up and get going with. It really does just flow smoothly, and I suspect would be a game many people would get back-to-back -back plays of when you do set it up on the table. Now, if you don't like group decisions and the possibility of players telling other players what to do in your cooperative games, you may want to steer clear of roll camera. Unless you're looking for a good single player dice placement game, because this game is great solo. It plays identical to playing with more players. This is definitely a game, though, that not only lends itself to quarterbacking, I would almost say encourages it. For the rest of you, not a huge cooperative game fan, but you don't mind some quarterbacking, and you're willing to try it, and you like dice placement, or you like films, check this game out. Check out Roll Camera. It's a very enjoyable game. While I personally usually prefer competitive games, this is one cooperative game that has won me over. More impressively for longtime fans of the show, this one has managed to win over my wife, Deanna, who normally doesn't enjoy cooperative games at all. I think the theme here is going to appeal to a lot of gamers and may even be enough to get a non-gamer to sit down at the table and work with you to make a movie. Well, that's it for our review of Roll Camera, the filmmaking board game. I invite you to also check out Mo's written review of this expansion over on the blog at tabletop of this game over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com.